We are live. I'm, I'm pumped for tonight's podcast. <laughs> I got a local, not even a local, a national wow. legend uh, with me who we'll get into more detail when we start this <laughs> podcast. Uh, but I can't wait to I have Chris Corciani here, guys. I'm going to make sure I share this to my personal page so we get everybody on board. We post there. Come back, make sure we tag everybody. So should be good. Make sure I got you, Chris. Oh. We're good there. And welcome to the Super Turb Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Turbot, your local real estate expert with the Ida Turbo Group, Cobalt Banker HPW, a.k.a. Super Turb, a.k.a. Coach Turb. And I've got a phenomenal guest with me, Chris Corciani, uh, with me. Um, I'm just beyond excited to, to kind of spitball with him, talk to him about his basketball career, his you know where he started, where you know where he went, where he's going, what he's doing now in, in business. Um, as you guys know, I started this podcast uh, last fall with the main premise to talk real estate, business, sports, and beer in the triangle uh, to feature local entrepreneurs, coaches, uh, store owners, athletes, you name it, uh, just for them to tell their story as well as feature a local beer and even talk some sports, which is great. But before we get into the interview, Chris, I want to talk a little bit about real estate. And this is great because you're going to be able to chime in too on some things you may be seeing. Is guys, we just had the update come out from Triangle MLS last, uh, just Friday. You know, I geek out about this. So I just wanted to share with you guys some stats and look at what we're seeing from July of 2020 to July of 2021. Guys, in the last 12 months, obviously we're in a month in arrear. We've seen an over a 24% appreciation rate in this market. The average sales price now, guys, is $472,000 in Wake County. And matter of fact, I'm about to go on a listing appointment on Sunday where I helped her buy this home three hundred for $300,000 a uh, year ago, May. Uh, some things have happened in her life. She's fallen in love, probably going to get married or going to get married, not probably. And I'm uh, looking at comps and she's probably going to list it for $375,000 just in one year. So in saying that, uh, inventory in that time frame is down 61%. Of course, we've been talking about that at length over the last 18 months with COVID uh, due to the fact that obviously more people are buying than selling. And so we're at 0.6 months inventory, 0.6. Over the last month, though, we've seen a little bit uptick in inventory. Uh, when I say that, I'm talking maybe a couple hundred listings right now. I believe, you know, as of July stats, we had 1,100 active listings down from 3,000. And I just think that's a combination of things being cyclical. I think people finally being able to travel school going back in. But again, it's all about pricing your home correctly. And uh, obviously with our marketing and getting it out there, price it correctly and you get max value. So if you have any questions about that, how we can help you accomplish your real estate goals, please reach out to me. I'd love to help you guys, whether that's buying or selling. You know, I always say, guys, who you work with matters. But enough of all that. I want to get back. I'm going to take this quick break. I'm going to have Chris on the other side and we're going to have some fun. And welcome back to the Super Turb Podcast. I'm your host again, Michael Turbot, your local real estate expert with the Ida Turbot Group, Cobalt Banger, HPW with Chris Corciani. Oh, this is awesome. Uh, so I know I've introduced you like four times. So tell everybody if you want your name, where you're from, and what you're doing right First now. First of all, Michael, I'm a little upset. What's up? You've got the headsets on the ears. I don't. Mm -hmm. you're, you're a professional. <laughs> it, it, might, it makes you talk a lot faster than I do. I, I'm working <laughs> on that. I'm working on that. Uh, no, just, um, you know, I, I you know, came here in, in uh, 1986 and uh, um, was fortunate enough to get a degree at NC State. Um, loved the area and uh, been in business, you know, ever since. Just a unbelievable area, market. Um, you know, a lot of times, a lot of people take it for granted. But where we are is special. Yeah, we got out. You're know, from Florida. Yeah, Florida. Or, or, originally from Miami, Florida. Came up here and um, fell in love with the area and just that the... You know, always knew this is where I wanted to be. Now, when you started, so just to backtrack, I'm sitting next to this, the second all-time mm -hmm. <laughs> assist leader in Division One basketball, correct? That is. That is correct. <laughs> and you were the leader for some time until this one guy named Bobby Hurley <laughs> came along. But you played in less games. <laughs> I've already done my stats. I've looked at it. And um, 
So when you started playing ball, and obviously before you guys, you know, I go by hashtag Coach Turb. I was a college basketball coach before getting into real estate and coaching people buying, out, buying and selling real estate now. But when you were in Florida. What made you come to Raleigh? Well, Jimmy, they, you know, I was um, being recruited by a number of different schools. And uh, back then there was only, you know, one or two games on a week. And the ACC was always on, and, um, you know, it was Carolina, Maryland, Duke, NC State. And, um, you know, when they won the national championship in 1983, you know, the Cinderella team, that kind of made me a fan. And, um, you know, when I was being recruited, I knew I wanted to play in the ACC. And, um, you know, it came down to three schools, one being Duke, uh, Virginia being the other, and then NC State. And, um, you know, I just thought at NC State with Coach D and an opportunity to play. Um, you know, a lot of people don't get a feel for, for a weekend about a city. Mm -hmm. And I really, you know, I, I loved Raleigh. Um, Duke was a little small, a little different. Um, I went up to Charlottesville, to Virginia, and um, they made me wear a tie. I'd never worn a tie in my life. They made me wear a tie to a football game. So I said, I said, oh, Coach Holland, I love you and everything, but I, this out. isn't this isn't me. I'm out. So um, it was just a great fit. You know, Coach B was, um, you know, just a great man and mentor and, um, you know, going there is the best decision I ever made, you know. And, uh, what was it like on your recruiting trip? Um, Did you just, you had the official visit, and of course that was a while back, but you went up there for a couple of days. Did yep. you go see a game, a football game, basketball yeah, went game? To, went to a football game. I went to one of the best NC State football games ever. And Coach B used to tell the story that um, I was up in the press box with him. He was the athletic director and head basketball coach. And we were playing uh, University of South Carolina. And in the fourth quarter, um, you know, there was uh, four or five seconds left. And NC State was down, you know, four or five points. And they threw a Hail Mary to the end zone. And uh, Haywood Jeffries called it for NC State, and uh, I yelled, "We won! We won!" And they knew he had Coach you. Said, no, <laughs> we, know he, we know him, but he was just a uh, unbelievable. So before that, tell us a little bit about your high school playing days. Where did you go? I mean, and when did you start playing ball? I started playing when I was probably four or five years old. My father was a high school basketball coach, and um, you know that's all I ever did. You know, was was either go to games and, and watch uh, or play, and uh, ended up interesting story in, in eighth and ninth grade. I went to a school called Kendall Acres. It was a private school, um, but high school didn't start until tenth grade in Miami. So in eighth and ninth grade, I played varsity basketball in a private school, and the coach was a guy by the name of Lenny Rosenbluth. Mm -hmm. He was on the fifty-seven. Uh, University of North Carolina national championship team was one of the best players. He, he his jersey hangs up in the rafters uh, at UNC in the Dean Dome. The funny story is he never once said that he was an All American, won a national championship, the most humble guy in the world, uh, Lenny Rosenbluth. But played for him for two years. Um, we won a state championship my ninth grade year, and then I transferred to Highly and Miami Lakes. My father was the the coach there and um we lived about 35 40 minutes away so i traveled to and from school with my dad and that can be good and bad mm -hmm. you know it can be really great when you had a good practice a good game <laughs> but when when you you had seven or eight turnovers in a game and you couldn't make a shot it was a long i'm long sure it was <laughs> that was awesome. so what was the program like when you arrived at state so that was 80 it was 87, no, 87 yeah, and yeah. you played till 91 Mm -hmm. um, you know, they had come off, um, obviously, 83, they won the national championship. In 86, they won the ACC championship. Um, we, we had a great team. You know, going in there, I, I knew I had an opportunity to play, but we were we were 12 deep. I mean, our practices were, were wars. I bet. And, you know, when you go in there as a freshman and you've got a senior point guard and a junior point guard, um, and, and they that's when you stayed four years. Yeah, exactly. You know, <laughs> imagine that. That's, know, a, right? that's an unbelievable concept it's nowadays. Amazing. But it was um, it was great. You know, the, the competition really you know made us better, and and you know we were deep and we were very talented. And I was I was so fortunate to play with great players, and you know an assist record is wonderful, but it really doesn't happen unless you've got tremendous talent right, around you. Yeah. 
I played with Vinny Del Negro and Charles Shackelford, Chucky Brown, Brian Howard, Rodney Monroe, Tom Gugliotta. I mean, Googs. The, the, the level of talent was just phenomenal. And I was I was blessed to have them around me because my skill set was really good at getting the ball to people that could finish. finish. And it worked out well. That's all. I remember watching. I, I moved here in 1986, as we were just saying before. And um, mom, Ida, can't call her. It's weird. <laughs> she she uh made, she she's made a, she she's, is, she's the real legend, legend. Again, yeah. Yeah. she's the real legend she made me play basketball because i came from california and over there was either baseball or football and she's like you're gonna play basketball I was in fifth grade yeah. and, and i remember that was in the late 80s early, you know so i watched you guys and that it was awesome yeah that, that was, was awesome it was a good time yeah. I, I i i hate being this this old guy now being 50 like, oh, back when we used to play, there was only eight teams in the conference. Right. And everybody that was before stayed, Florida State. Right. Before Florida, everybody stayed yeah. four years. And it was really intimate and nice. Um, it's changed so much. And that just goes, I was just about to get to the next question. I know you also talked about Coach you know, Jimmy B. Um, and is there a story from Coach that you know you feel you're comfortable sharing that many people may not know or the kind of man he was? Because obviously the legend he was—I mean, this the guy, Jimmy B is Jimmy B. But if you could shed some light or maybe a story or maybe a game or—I yeah, I, I always I, think I, of the Jimmy B yeah. speech when he was over there. Where was he when he goes into the locker room and the doors the locked? Rock, rock, nice yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Rutgers. Yeah, yeah Rutgers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he didn't yeah. try that speech with you guys, no, did he? No, he. I mean, there's so many different stories. I mean, uh, about being recruited and in the games. Um, you know, one of my favorites was when you know, I was getting, I, I ended up having a girl for my sophomore year. And word got Coach D that, that uh, you know, Scott I Wood had, says, what's up? <laughs> Scotty Wood, yeah. best shooter ever. <laughs> but I had a, um, a girlfriend, and I was being, everybody was giving me a hard time. And Coach D found out about it. I had a bad game. And he said, it's that damn girlfriend I heard about. <laughs> so he said, uh, at four o'clock before practice, I want you to come to my office. And that was a kind of normal thing. And he said, I want you to bring this girlfriend with you. And I was like, man, I can bring my, my new girlfriend to, to, to his office. Ended up um, going to his office and I walked in and it, you were always scared going. It's, it's like the principal. Oh, yeah. Office. You're going in there. Yeah. Um, and he, and right, we were going through some problems with the NCAA back at, back mm -hmm. at the time. He walked in. He said, "Who's this?" And I said, "This, this is my girlfriend." And I'm a, you know, naive young, you know, sophomore. And he said, "You can't have a girlfriend. That's an NCAA violation. You can't have it. That's, you forget that. Plus, you played terrible last game." Yeah. And you're sure your girlfriend was at attention. Oh yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So, that's, but there's more stories about uh, it. that's that's that I miss is that it, that behind the ropes and stuff you see. And you touched on the ACC back then in more of an intimate situation. Um, maybe touch on that real briefly regarding, you know, it was only there was eight teams and I mean, the rivalries were real and it's, it's changed a lot, you know, with the, now you, now you got, I mean, how many teams are going to have in the conference now? You, you know, so, I mean, but the more of the bus rides and things like that, correct? It, it was special, Michael. You know, you, you, you had eight teams and, and as you alluded to earlier, most of those guys stayed all four years, and so there were true rivalries. The the arenas were much smaller. Oh, like I love Reynolds. Reynolds. Yeah, Reynolds. I wish Reynolds. I wish they still I, played there. Let me tell you, Reynolds, Reynolds is you now. I go back to the girls' games, and I still get chills just yeah. being in there. And the band starts playing, and it's just a phenomenal venue. But the arenas were smaller. The players you knew, um, you know, the the, the the every game was just. I mean, whoever you were playing against they, they were always good the players i'm not played against bobby hurley and kenny anderson john karate i mean they, mm. it was never a night off not about and, and, karate. oh the toughest i tell play. people the toughest guy ever guarding i was gonna ask you that so john karate. killed me this yeah. guy i couldn't guard him he was a lefty and he was herky jerky and the only uh school that i didn't beat in my four years on the road was virginia and i probably averaged one point seven turnover I, he totally crushed me every mm -hmm. game um but he was he was just a great competitor strong could do it all but back then it was just so neat and the thing i really missed more than anything is the acc tournament 
No, Friday, um, Saturday, Sunday. That's when they rolled the TV in. And, uh, and, and schools, <laughs> and yeah, I've heard all that, yeah. Was, but it was the greatest show. I call it the greatest show on earth. Mm -hmm. And uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and you geared up, and it was special, and your family came in, and, um, you know, you, 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 you survive, and you get to Saturday. Saturday with four teams, I mean, it was the greatest thing. Almost maybe yeah. better than the Final Four. Oh, back, you know? back then, it, yeah. was, it was special. And now it starts on Tuesday. I'll tell you a funny story. All right. I watch every NC State game. I, I go to the games. I'll go to some, some road games. Just a, a big fan, big, big support. I was having lunch in Cameron Village on Tuesday of the ACC tournament um, and looked up, and it was 12.30, and I was having lunch. And they were, I didn't even know they were playing. That's how okay. it's either I'm a bad fan or it's just the the, the way that the times are now. They were playing a 12 30 game, I believe, on a Tuesday. Yeah, it's like a playing game. Like, yeah, on. yeah. It's, you know, it's, it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday was beautiful. It's all that. And yeah. um, so, fire, fire and ice. <laughs> that was 89. That was 87. 87. We, we, was yeah, it fire and ice? We came in as freshmen. Oh, and that was that. Guy. So it started it. I mean, that went everything. Yep. What, so, how, where was Rodney from? He was from Hagersville, uh, Maryland. And who thought of Fire and Ice? A guy named the Sports Information Director, Mark Bachelman, uh -huh. came up with that name. And the funny story, and some people have heard this, but Rodney and I came in as guards. And it wasn't like you're the point guard, you're the two guard. We were guards. And we had Benny Donegar, Quentin Jackson, Kelsey. We had competition. Well, on the first week we're on campus, we're playing a pickup game with Carmichael. And, um, we ended up getting in a ball, and we ended up going three rounds. You know, a lot of times you get in a little fight, and it's over. We went three different times, and, and I remember one of the rounds was for about 45 seconds. Usually you throw a punch and grab somebody, up. and I was like, man, is somebody going to jump in? But we, <laughs> we, we, got, we got in more trouble, so we got called to Coach B's office that night after our, our boxing match. And he said, you guys, the biggest idiots in the world, you know, you guys are going to be together, you know, not apart. You know, what are you guys doing? Beat yeah. the hell out of one another. And and, and from that point forward, you know, we, we kind of formed a, a bond because we both, you know, were competitive. We wanted to play as, as yeah. freshmen. And uh, it ended up being a, a very unique bond where I, I truly knew exactly where he was at all times on the court. And, um, you know, that's something that it, it, it doesn't happen the first time you play. It's it's over time oh, yeah. that you end up. Kind well, y'all were you were something to see. And do you, do you guys still stay in touch? We do. You know, mm -hmm. It's funny. Ronnie Monroe sends uh, Tom Gugliotta and I a, a prayer every day. So, oh, so that's awesome. It's, it, it's a special thing. Where's he at? Where's he living now? Uh, Ronnie's in Huntersville, right outside of Charlotte. Yeah. And uh, Tom is in Atlanta. So. Mm -hmm. Every day we get a prayer. That's so fantastic. Then, you know, and then we go back and forth. I love it. Text. I love it's it. Pretty, pretty cool. So tell me about battle and Hurley. He was a monster. Yeah. He was uh, the funny thing. Because what he, he came in in night. Came a year after. Are you, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's, and, that's uh, right. Yep. And, and his physique didn't scare you. I mean, he was six foot, maybe 160 pounds. He wasn't this overpowering kind of looking guy but boy he was tough and, and he was a competitor and uh he would fight you you know to win you know th those teams back then winning really mattered and bobby hurley was just a, a tough player. he did whatever it took to win um he could score but he was a, he yeah, was a was ultimate up. uh uh, in the <laughs> <laughs> he was an ultimate competitor yeah and, and a lot of people looked at him and was like man how is he he could go. Yeah, he just. I there. always wonder if he didn't have the car accident, what could have happened. But he, he had, you know, yeah, he, he had a a great run prior to being drafted when, mm -hmm. when the young guys played the Olympic team, mm -hmm. and he went crazy. Yeah, but I've always been a huge fan of his, and uh, uh, again, just a, a competitor. Just good. Yeah, you know. that's awesome. And uh, you kind of breathe. So, out of all your teammates, it's Googs, Monroe. Anybody else that you keep up with? Yeah, to keep up with Chucky Brown and uh, A.Y. Lester. There's a number of players. It's a lot, obviously, a lot easier keeping in touch with guys that are here. But we're trying um, to get Coach Lowe on the next podcast. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I texted yeah. him. Like he saw you. He's like, what time? <laughs> <laughs> you know, we helped him uh, sell and buy a couple times. He's a great guy. Yeah, he's, I he's, saw him at the uh, some game two with the Canes game. 
he's a classic. He's again, he's part of the reason I'm here, just watching him play. Uh, My dad has a question for you. Yeah. All right, what do you think of Leighton? <laughs> I tell you, Mr. <laughs> Turbert, I, I, you know, it, it it hates me to say this, but but I was always a huge fan of uh, Christian Leighton. I got to know him, and he was he was a little different than than I think the the persona that he gave off, and. Um, you know, I got a chance to run into him about four or five years ago at the Final Four, and uh, just just a neat guy, very quirky, different. Um, but but as far as a guy, I, I always got along really well with him. And then, you know, I was talking about Hurley. I, I don't know if there was a better competitor for forty minutes, you know, on the court than, than Christian Leitner. And I would put uh, Tyler Hansborough on that group. I'd put Leitner in that group. You know, when they were out there for 40 minutes, you know, all they wanted to do was win. Was win. That's that's the only thing. And in that era, winning was everything. Did you go? Did you play against Grant Hill? Yep. Yeah. I mean, think about those teams: yeah. Hurley, Grant Hill, Thomas Hill. Because they went 90, 91, 90. The 90 was when they lost to Vegas, I think, in yep. the semifinal. And then they came back yeah. in 91. And or the they, yeah. Yeah, late, late or the championship. Um, great, great player, but also a really, really neat guy. Yeah. So now you. Going back to state, you get drafted by the Magic. Is that correct? Second yes. round. Yep. What was that like? Did you, did you um, tell us about the phone call? Was it <laughs> what, what was draft day like back then? Well, How many was it? Still two rounds. Yeah, there, there was two rounds, and um, I was told, you know, by, by Golden State that they were going to take me either with their 18th pick or the 25th pick. So with their 18th pick, they took a guy named Chris Gatlin, and I said, All right, well, 25. You know, they, they told me they were going to take me. Mm -hmm. 25 came, boom, wasn't me. 26, 27, uh, we uh, got into the second round, and, and I was up in New Jersey, and my, all my relatives, so my mom and dad are from, originally from New Jersey. We were up there in the summer. I said, you know what, I'm just going for a walk. So the second round started, and I was nervous. I just went for a walk, and then one of my cousins came running down the street and said, hey, you Orlando know, Magic just took you in. It, it probably was one of the worst teams I could go to because they had three guaranteed contracts at the point guard position. They had mm -hmm. Moreland Wiley, Sam Vincent, and Scott Skiles. So I went there. Scott Skiles. Uh, one of my favorites. Yeah. 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 yeah, one of my favorites. But went down there and um, I actually got cut. It was the first time I'd ever been cut uh, in basketball. And I tell my kids this, and I, and I share this with some people. When, when I got cut, Matty Gupas was the coach. And I said, Coach Gupas, what do I have to do to, to be able to play in this league? You know, please tell me, because I want to I want to work on what I and he said, I'll be honest with you, no one's ever asked me that question. And he said, You need to work on pull up, you need to work on defense, you need to do a long list of things. Mm -hmm. But I took all that to heart and in about uh, a month and a half later, Sam Vincent and Scott Skiles got injured on the first day. And they called me up, flew me out to Denver, and actually started my, my first game I ever played in the NBA. I started. It was the only start I ever had in three years, but ended up starting. And, and he would later tell me, he said, the only reason we called you up is the way you handled your 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 exit interview. There you go. And he said, I wanted to give you I wanted to give you an opportunity. That was Shaq there? Shaq came my second, second year. Uh -huh. So my second year with Orlando was Shaquille's rookie year. Now, what was that like? That was that was not so. My first year, <laughs> my first year with the Magic, nobody nobody even knew they were an NBA team. They were an expansion team. Yeah. So people were thinking, hey, with the Orlando Magic, must be like a, a, a minor league team. Huh? We would go to games and there would be half full, you know, arenas. When Shaquille came, it was nuts. I mean, we we pull up. To the hotel oh, yeah. and the lobby was packed. He was one of the first. I mean, obviously had Jordan and some of those guys, but he was more than just a basketball player. He's iconic. He was yeah. like this huge figure. And every game packed and we had security. I mean, it was like going from kind of the JV team to the varsity team. And uh it was just nuts. Uh just the media that kind of just migrated in. Yeah. Huge, right? Oh, How big? Gosh. Oh, seven one. Yeah. But and he was still, he was kind of skinny then. That's where I was going. He was yeah. thin. You know, yeah. you look at him now, you look at him later in his career. Big. You know, he called himself yeah. Shaq mm -hmm. Diesel. Yeah. But when he was a rookie and in the early part of his career, he was lean and could run the floor. Um, just a, a, a great guy, big kid. 
I'm he sure you like dropping kid. dimes with, to him. His his first basket he ever scored in the NBA was on an assist by me. There I, you I go. Don't, I don't have a lot. See, of, I didn't know I, that. I don't that's have a, a lot of things. That's a say. trivia <laughs> question right there. That's a trivia question. I like that. Cool. So what it was like to play professional, and then after that you went overseas and. You played quite a bit, quite a long time, and then you I know. was I was so fortunate. I, I really was, and, and you know I, I always say you, you have to be good, but you really have to be lucky. Mm -hmm. And and I was I was um, I was really lucky. You know, to play three years in the NBA, I got to play uh, the last year of the Boston Garden. So I played with the Celtics in '94, mm -hmm. and then I went overseas for eight years, and, and I was just an absolute. Were you married at the time? Mm -hmm. So yeah. that was okay. Yeah, married, I had kids. So then were the kids overseas they with were, you? They were okay. international schools. Well, there you go. It was it was an unbelievable experience being over there, and, and, and a lot of guys have had that opportunity to go over there. But I I wanted to learn the language, the culture. Um, I had some teammates they play Xbox, and I said, yeah. listen, this is an opportunity. You yeah. to get out on the street, yeah, and and take it take it all in. Um, so I was three years in Italy, three years in Spain. You won a championship in Spain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Won, won a championship there, which was. Uh, How was the hoops over there? Are they just as crazy? It, they are, but but I always say that the obviously the top sport in in Europe is soccer. Mm -hmm. The second sport is soccer, and the third. I mean, that, so it's soccer way up here. Yeah. And then then basketball and other sports, but it's I mean they just love their soccer over there. It's unbelievable. As soon as the season's over that's all we're talking about the next season yeah but uh, uh, yeah it was, it was just a great experience quick question my dad says do you know coach lutes yeah we, yeah love coach lutes that was my that's he, who i he, worked with yeah, uh, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. great i tell you he's a, a, a great person great coach and great golf he needs to oh yeah <laughs> and he needs to get hired you know he was at nebraska with hoiberg as a special yeah. assistant to the head coach but he was doing that hoping that they thought the rule was going to change where he could be on the floor. Mm -hmm. And when that didn't happen, he said, I want to coach. Yeah, and yeah. I think someone's foolish not to get him. He, he's one of the, the the best coaches, minds, yep. that, that I've ever had a chance to be around. And just listening to him talk the game, the, the way he handles the, the team, um, why he's not a head coach is it's, it's, it, it, it's crazy. Yeah, and what, did you ever think about coaching? You know, when I finished playing, when I was, you know, came back from overseas, I had an opportunity to, uh, Eddie Biedenbach was at Asheville, and he asked me if I wanted to, to get into coaching and get a spot. And I had, for 11 years, I had kind of traveled out of the suitcase, and I had one-year deals, and I was here and there. And I really wanted to settle down. My kids, my, my oldest son, uh, then was six or seven, and, and I really wanted him to get in school here in Raleigh and and not keep dragging them all over the place. And in coaching, as you know, you know, you're you're there for a couple of years and then you get another oh, yeah. job and yeah. move around. And, and I did that for eleven years. And I said, you know what, I, I just don't want to do that. I just remember, you know, I was coaching at Washita Baptist University, which was a phenomenal experience. But that was a question I asked myself, am I ready to move five times in five years? Exactly. And the answer was no. I just got married. Of course, growing up and being around mom in real estate, she made it look easy. I didn't yeah. know what you, many kids don't know what <laughs> yeah. your parents do. So I came back in 06 and I'll just sell real estate and yeah. not knowing what we were walking into in the economy there. But, it, you know, but the coaching helped me with what we do now as far as helping people, um, the uh, non set hours working, you know, mm -hmm. and just it's similar situation. So I'm, I'm beyond grateful for that opportunity. So you, play professionally what was your best memory professionally was it one in spain or was there something yeah, that's pro probably winning in spain we, we won the um the spanish cup i was with a team called tal ceramica mm -hmm. and uh, you know it just was a kind of week-long party after we won and um those memories we went back uh four or five years ago went back for a reunion and that was special but um you know they they had never you know won you know that that tournament uh, or that one in so many years, but uh, that was just a, a special memory. But I tell you, I mean, I I was so fortunate. I had so many great memories and what well, uh, it's just awesome. Yeah. Um. So then you come back and then you're like, all right, I'm you know I want to coach, and then you um get into real estate. I did. Uh -huh. yeah, I got into real estate for about a year, year and a half, and this is a a true story. I was at an NC State basketball. 
and um, DNJ Mortgage was a local mortgage company, and um, Gordon Miller was the, the, the owner of the company. And half time, I go up to the concession stand, and somebody got, taps me on my shoulder. And I turn around, I never met him, but I knew who he was, and it was Gordon Miller. And he said, Hey, are you Chris? I said, Yeah. He said, I'm Gordon Miller, I own DNJ Mortgage. How would you like to buy a mortgage company? I said, That's a weird thing to say. <laughs> I turned to him and I said, I, all I want to buy right now is a hot dog. You know, <laughs> half time of the game. And um, about three weeks later, I ended up buying DNJ Mortgage and leaving the real estate world and staying in the world. Mm-hmm. And um, had DNJ Mortgage for a number of years. And a couple of years after I bought DNJ Mortgage, I started a title company called Triumph Title. Mm-hmm. And um, that was 15 years ago. That's hard to beat. Yeah. So I've, I've kind of been in your industry, uh-huh. you know, on the other well, side. Tell everybody what Triumph Title is. It does. It's it's a, you know, that obviously we deal with title insurance, but it, for someone listening, going, all right, what does that mean? And was there challenges getting it off, challenges getting it off the ground? Yeah. You know, it's it's uh, interesting. A lot of people don't even know what title insurance is. Right. They know they need it. They know the lender requires it, but they have, they have no idea what it, what it is. And uh, when I got in that business, we, um, you know, started out local and we, um, you know, would go and, and market to, you know, realtors and builders and attorneys. And um, in North Carolina, it's a set rate. So it doesn't matter if you use Triumph Title or another company, you're getting the same price. And uh, over the course of uh, 14, 15 years, we kind of branched out um, all throughout the states. And now we're, we have 10 marketing reps all throughout. North Carolina, and we service you know, all 100 counties, and um, you know it's uh, you know it's like you talked about coaching. You have got to have you know good service on one end, and you've got to have marketing people making relationships on the other. So it's funny you mentioned that. I think all things always come back to athletics. It does, and, and it really yeah. parallels kind of life, athletics, and business. I think so. I think yeah. I was going to ask you about that as well, but I think athletics just prepares you for for life after hoops yes. or whatever you're playing. For example, you know, every level you drop off. I was fortunate enough to play varsity basketball. I couldn't jump over a New York phone book. <laughs> so I knew I had to get into coaching, but at that time, but I also went through my trials, just like you, you get to Orlando, get cut for the first time, but that made you stronger yep. to deal with adversity. And I think it's the same thing. Uh, I think that's where athletics is so big, even to be on schedule time, you know, things, things of that nature. Um, as far as try on what's your vision for that um well we we uh are pretty much in every uh area of the state we just are, are constantly trying to um you know make our service even better and we're, we're big into technology we have a rollout coming out in the next month that's going to make uh, our partners which are attorneys and paralegals much more efficient so we're constantly trying to just kind of fine tune everything mm-hmm. and uh, it's it's a great business i love it um you know i get the opportunity to travel all throughout the state with our marketing reps um you know and it's given me an opportunity not only for business but also to see the beautiful state of north carolina yeah. and i mean i'm up in my, my son markets up in murphy north carolina and it is way the heck up there so mm-hmm. honestly we've got reps in murphy we have reps in now Canada. how many kids do you have i have four Okay. And um, yeah, and one of your sons played at state as well. Yep. My, my mm-hmm. oldest son played at state. He's actually working for me in the Charlotte market. Nice. My second oldest son is Tommy, and uh, he's working for me up in the mountains. All right. Um, he went to the University of South Carolina and was a walk on and ended up going to the final four. Yes. Uh, you know, with, with Frank Martin, uh, Martin when they had that tremendous. How is he? nuts yeah talking about nuts yeah and, and so frank and i grew up in miami yeah. so he was a kansas state right he was a, you mm-hmm. talk about somebody nuts i mean, mm-hmm. I mean he is really all division one head well yeah, all head coaches are kind of nuts <laughs> yeah, anyway. another, he was yeah. another level yeah frank frank if you ever get a chance to watch him he is just uh, as intense as they get but but again the, the things that he teaches the kids are, are they're for the rest of their life yeah so, great experience my daughter is a senior at the university of alabama and I am thrilled because I said I finally have a really good team. <laughs> I, I have you been to no games down yeah. there? Oh, it's it's crazy. 
Yeah, I bet yeah, so. I mean, those SEC games are, are kind of another level. But That's um, three, I think. And then three. my youngest is a uh, rising senior at Broad. Wow. So, so. Uh, that And you got two of your boys working for you. Mm-hmm. That's kind of uh, my myself and my sister Colleen. Yeah. We're a family team, that's so that's awesome. cool. Yeah, that's a lot um, so I got one. I got a funny question. We're going to go rapid questions to wrap it up. I got to know what you said to get ejected. <laughs> <laughs> was that Carolina State? No, that was Florida State. Yeah, Florida State. <laughs> you would, and, you uh, would Google yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scotty yeah. Wood, if he's still listening, he's part of the story because <laughs> he shoots he shoots a three-pointer in the corner. And Now, which and, was the ref? Because he was the one that no one likes him. Yeah, Carl yeah, Hess he's Hess got a little reputation anyway. Yeah, he ends up shooting a three-pointer, and they don't call a foul. And uh, – you know, Goog's yelling, hey, where's the foul? Where's the foul? Wood got hammered down. And another play comes, and we're on the, and, and, and uh, Lorenzo Brown was their point guard. And the guard had two hands on his waist. And I said, Carl, Lorenzo can't dribble with two hands on his waist. Get his, get the guy's hands off his waist. And he kind of looked back at me, and I said, Carl, you, you hear me. You know, <laughs> you make, make the right call. Well, a couple of plays later, Scotty Wood shoots a, a three. In the corner, and you know what a great shoot. He didn't oh, yeah. he didn't never no. miss two in a row. This time they called the foul. And Goog stands up and says, Carl, about time. And that triggered him. About time was okay, about time. I throw you guys out. The funny thing, Mike, long time we, we we didn't use any profanity. We weren't threatening. Did you tell him your jersey in the rafter? No, no, <laughs> he, he just threw us out. Funny story is about two months later, um, his son was a great pitcher. And um, he was at Elliott Avon, a baseball coach's uh, baseball camp. And Elliot calls me up. He says, listen, I hope you don't mind. I just gave Carl Hess your cell and Tom's cell. He wants to give you a call. He wants to talk to you. This is you know, maybe three, four months after the incident. So I said, okay, great. So he called me up and start talking. And, and I said, you know, Carl, I appreciate the call. It means a lot. Um, didn't, didn't apologize. Didn't, I, I said, I just have one question. I mean, it, did he use any protection? No. He said, well, when Tom stood up, you know, I felt a little flat. And I said, come on, Carl, really? I said, but you know what? I appreciate you making the phone call because that, that means a lot. And I hung up and called Goose. I said, Goose, you know, Hess is going to call you. My, my phone call was probably about seven or eight minutes. Tom's was about 20 seconds because Tom said to him, are you apologizing or not? He said, <laughs> he said if you're not apologizing, I'm hanging the phone up. So their call, he, he he made the effort, but but he, he would not apologize for, for what he did. We're, we're honest to God, we, we did nothing wrong, but we were you being we, a fan. We were being sarcastic. Yeah, it, you're being a but, fan. But never yeah. were we a, a yeah. Yeah. You're, being, you're being a fan. All right. Well, right. I just had to ask because I think that's <laughs> great. I, so all right, some rapid questions. Uh, I like to ask. Uh, favorite place you've traveled? Italy. All right. One place you want to travel to. Um, I would like to go to Japan, one of one of those places that I don't really want to go, but it'd be different. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Favorite movie? Caddyshack. Oh. <laughs> Favorite restaurant? Ooh, that's a tough that one. could be you yeah. know, nationally or and what about local? Uh, what's your favorite Raleigh? Not to I'm saying, but what what's your favorite restaurant? I, I, I love Coney Island and Amelios. All right. Fate favorite sports team other than the pack. The Philadelphia Phillies. Phillies, all right. Do you like hockey? I love hockey. Yeah, Canes are. Oh, I'm actually that's... one of my buddies tomorrow. You may know him, Michael Martin. He's with Fairway Morgan. Yep. And uh, I went in with him and two other buddies. We got a four season, full season. We're split in four ways. So we're doing the draft on the schedule tomorrow. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's cool. Where... I'll tell you, the, the hockey, I mean, they're, they're, they're going full speed. Yeah. They're, they're you know on ice. And they're getting pushed, and they're then they have to control it with the stuff. I mean, it's, it's amazing. It blows me away. Yeah, when you get down. when when you're, I've taken the kids a couple times, sit on the ice, and when you're that, sometimes the viewing angle is not the best, but you get to see how big and fast those guys are. Oh, and here, I can't even walk straight yeah, half the time. Yeah, you know, it's, it's pretty amazing. <laughs> All right, you can have dinner with two people, either dead or alive. Who would it be? Oh, uh, Jimmy B and my father. Awesome, yeah. that's good. And lastly, what's the um, I, I, I ask this question, everybody comes on the podcast, and I think it's, I've had great answers by everybody. If anything, I think a book at the end, whatever the Super Turf podcast is done, I think it would be great. But what's the best advice you've ever received and by who? The best 
good and bad. And they said, you know, it's simple. Just do the best you can. We're, we're proud of you with doing the best you can, whether it was in school or athletics. And, you know, I carry that over, you know, to, to my everyday life. You know, if you're, if you're given your all, there's nothing, you know, that, then the chips fall where they, yeah. they, 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 they. Well, it's funny because my dad asked this question. He says, do you know Coach Miller, Mark Miller? He was my coach at Ravenscroft. And uh, now he works um, church right up the road, um, North because North Raleigh basketball, Northridge, it's the church, but he helps with um, uh, maybe the less fortunate kids, helps with scholarships, but he's always teaching. And he was my high school coach, and and uh, he was phenomenal. He was um, he coached down in Georgia, had some really good high school runs. Then he was the assistant at Campbell back in the day when they actually played Carolina as a 16 seed. They came in. So that would have been like 96 because yeah. I was a rising junior. But he always – and one interesting thing is he never never cussed. Mm -hmm. And he always – that's where I got sugar from. Yeah, he said sugar. sugar. Uh, but he always taught us to finish. And that's what I teach either – you know, whether that's – I tell my kids the same thing. and It could be shooting a layup, finish the layup. You start something, you finish. Yes. You, you make a commitment, you finish. And that's always stuck with me. So that's great. I love it. Well, man, this has been fantastic. I can't thank you enough for coming on. This has been a treat. Been able to tell us, you know, hear some stories. Obviously, we've known each other prior to this, but this was really cool for you to take the time. For me, you know, your mom was a legend. You and your sister now. I mean, the family business. Be being on the the, the Turbot show of, of, you know, the greatest real estate uh, uh, family around is, is special. Well, special. I appreciate yeah. that. It means a lot. I mean, I was in Jamaica when you called me. I showed my wife was Chris is calling. This is a big <laughs> deal, man. So anyway, well, guys, I want I can't thank Chris for joining me on the Super Turf Podcast. Usually, I have a local beer of the week I feature, but we've kind of been talking, having a great time. So we'll feature that the next time. If you're all thinking about, if you are a local business owner, entrepreneur, and you want to be on the podcast, message me. That's what I'm here to do is help to you guys tell your story. I'd love to have you on the show. And as always, too, if you're thinking about buying or selling, you just have questions with the real estate market, especially how competitive it is now uh, with the low supply, high demand. This is what we're here. We'd be honored to assist you do just that. And if you like the podcast, please subscribe. Please like, leave a comment. You can follow it on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Facebook, and, of course, YouTube. And so, again, it's Michael Turbot, your local real estate expert with the Added Turbo Group, Total Banger HBW with Chris Corciani. We'll see you next time. And remember, guys, who you work with matters. See ya.